Boy. Just leave me alone. Watch out for stragglers. My son! My son! Don't worry, woman. You can keep him company on the way to the cross. Don't take it. He's just a boy. Have big... parade of a Roman general. I'm in the service of the emperor, the divine Nero. We don't have time to waste on parades. You'd better get your men out of my way, Menecrides, or I'll ride right over them. Forward! Still the same. Just as it was when we left for Gaul seven years ago. Can you offer something to drink to three poor soldiers? Marcus. Oh, son. Mother. Let me look at you. You haven't changed a bit. I'm afraid you flatter me. After all, seven long years have passed. Soara, serve them wine. What? You mean she's Soara? I've grown up, Master. So I see. And beautiful, too. <laughs> mm. I have a new toga for you to try on, Marcus. Of course, the uniform suits you very well, as I've always thought when I saw you on parade. But I prefer you dressed in civilian clothing. <laughs> Marcus, what's this scar? You've been wounded. Fulvius, I thought you said you were going to look after him on the battlefield. It's not easy to keep an eye on him. He's always way out in front of the others. <laughs> Marcus! Seneca! We'll be leaving Marcus Valerius. If you should want us for anything, we'll be at the barracks. Fine. So you're back from the wars at last. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Until later. Farewell. Seneca, your fame has reached even as far as Gaul. I hear that you're Rome's greatest philosopher. It seems the wisest thing to be in times of tyranny. Tyranny? Oh, yes. I'd forgotten that you don't know Nero. You're a brave man, Seneca. How many others would dare to speak so frankly? Very few, unfortunately. The only people who can are the senators, the fathers of their country. A collection of sycophants and cowards who are always ready to change their emperor as they would their togas. You won't find a senator in Rome who isn't rotten to the core. Whereas if the Senate were to set an example and enforce the laws, they could rescue Rome from this shameful sink of iniquity and restore it to all its glory. And Nero? The divine emperor? <laughs> the man's a megalomaniac whose sole ambition is to compose odes and sing them to the lyre, to hear applause and adulation, to massacre Christians. Oh, yes, the Christians. I heard about them in Gaul, and I've seen something of them in Rome. But what are they, really? Someday, you'll find out. This is a day of joy for all of us. Rome is greatly indebted to you for the glorious victories which have raised the prestige of the empire during the seven years you've campaigned in Gaul. The many bloody battles which you fought along our most distant frontiers have saved us from numerous invasions. Above all, it is the Senate over which I, Flavius Crassus, have the great honor to preside that desires to express its gratitude. Knowing that your glorious exploits in the past will pave the way for an even more triumphal future. For the greatest empire man has ever seen, 
which is the gods decreed, is ruled by one who's immortal, Nero, our divine emperor, whose radiant light shines down upon us all. Well, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? I loathe long speeches. I'm sure you're anxious to see something of the city again after your long absence. It's hard to believe that I'm home again. You'll find that Rome has greatly changed, and it's all due to the magnificent spirit of the divine Nero. Don't you agree? Do you? You're an intelligent man, Marcus, not just a soldier. And if you use your head, you'll go a long way. Why don't you come and see me one day? I live in the Palatine. I'm told you have the most beautiful palace in Rome. That's perfectly true. You'd be utterly amazed if you had any idea how much money I've made furnishing arms and supplies for your campaigns. Which not only saved Rome, but made my fortune. Clever. Next time, take a little less profit and send me better material, would you? I promise to keep it in mind. In any case, I feel we could work out a business arrangement that would be very much to your advantage. Are you interested? I know all about you, ever since we used to play together in my garden. You're Julia. Yes. Do you think I've changed so much? But I knew you as a skinny little girl. With freckles. <laughs> I never would have recognized you, to be frank. You've grown up to be a lovely young woman. You make me blush when you talk like that. Blush? Can Romans still blush? I'm sure you must have gone through some frightening experiences, Marcus. Soldiers do. When you went away, you were so carefree and happy. It seems like only yesterday that you came to say goodbye. And you said to me, with your ideas, by the time I come back, you'll be married to some rich patrician. I can't tell you how sad you made me with that one. So your ideas have changed? Yes. Marcus Valerius. I'm ordered to escort you to Ted Gelinas. He wants to talk to you. Who is he and what does he want to talk to me about? He is Nero's chief advisor. Is that enough to satisfy you? For the moment. Goodbye, Julia. I hope to see you soon. Will you call on me? Certainly. So, you refuse to carry out Nero's orders? That's not what I said. What then? I'm beginning to be sorry that I even left Gaul. I'm a consul and I command the strongest legion Rome has. My post is at the frontiers of the Empire, not trying to chase imaginary enemies through the sewers. So you consider the Christians only imaginary enemies? I'm not interested in them or in their religious problems. I'm a soldier and not a Praetorian. Menequities can wander around town attacking those defenseless fanatics. But not I. The divine Nero is the august emperor. Supreme Consul Pontifex Maximus, father of the country, and his enemies, Marcus Valerius, are the true enemies of the empire. And whoever refuses to fight them is a traitor. You dare to question my loyalty? 
I haven't so far, but I don't think you've really understood the situation. The Christians believe in the equality of all men. They want to liberate the slaves. They'll accept any sort of humiliation for their faith. They won't bear arms. They hate war and all forms of violence. They despise conquest and anything else that adds to the strength and prestige of Rome. They're like an acid corroding the iron frame of the empire. Like many others, you refuse to see the danger. But remember that I told you, these ideas will cause the fall of Rome. Menacrates with all his Praetorians, don't you think he can wipe them out? I do not. That's why the Emperor has chosen you for this assignment. Which had become a difficult one. In fact, the Christians seemed to have disappeared. They weren't to be found anymore in their old meeting places where we'd taken them by surprise. It almost seems as if they'd abandoned their habitual worship. But they can't hide from us any longer. We've discovered their refuge. The catacombs. They're extensive underground caverns beneath the Appian Way. We've discovered the entrances to these grottos. Tonight, you and your men with Menecrates and his Praetorians will surround the whole area. Not one of those traitors must escape us. Not one! You can take any of these passages into the catacombs. Lucius Fulvius, you and your men will follow the right-hand tunnel. Yes. Claudius and all the others will come with me. Let's go. And does... You and your Praetorians remain here. I don't want to be attacked from the rear. You think the Christians will react? Hmm. Obviously, you don't know them. What you say may be true, but I prefer that you remain. martyrdom of Jesus in Judea, tell our faithful followers just how this came to pass. And they brought Jesus to the high priest, and all the priests and scribes and the ancients assembled together. And all the council sought for evidence against Jesus, and some bore false witness against him. And the high priest asked Jesus, Answerest thou nothing to the things that are laid to thy charge by these men? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed God? And Jesus said to him, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest, rending his garments, saith, What need ye any further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What think you? who all condemned him to death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy! And the servants struck him with the palms of their hands. Look, there's Publius Rufus and his daughter Julia. Now when I was in the court, there cometh one of the maidservants of the high priest, 
And when she had seen me, looking on me, she saith, Thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But I denied, saying, I neither know nor understand what thou sayest. And the cock crew. Again the maidservant began to say, This is one of them. But I denied again. And they that stood by said, Surely thou art one of them. But I said, I know not this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crew again. And I remembered the word that Jesus had said unto me. Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt thrice deny me. And I began to weep. What are we waiting here for? In the meantime, they can all get away. Perhaps Marcus Valerius has run into some difficulties. We'll wait a little longer. Then we'll go and see. No, we can't. We're wasting time. Very well, I'll alert the others. All right, God, follow me. And Pontius Pilate again answering saith to them, What will you then that I do to the king of the Jews? But again, they cried out, And Pilate saith to them, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, Crucify him. And so Pilate, being willing to satisfy the people, released to them Barabbas and delivered up Jesus to be crucified. He's coming! He's coming! He's Come! Stop! In the name of God, stop! Get these people to safety. Come on, don't lie behind. Come on, everyone. Claudius, my name is Simon. If one day you and Marcus Valerius should have need of me, remember that my house is always open to you and your friends. Let's not stand here. The Praetorians will catch us. Everybody go home. We'll decide later where to meet the next time. Claudius, I want to thank you for all you've done for us. If you'll take my advice, you'll get out of Rome immediately. Too late. Hurry, this way. Publius Rufus. Go ahead. Father. We must go. I'll delay them. Father, I can't leave you.
Whom are you seeking? We found what we're looking for. A filthy traitor named Publius Rufus. I have betrayed no one. Archer, shoot! Magnificence. What splendor! And down there, as I see it, the new circus. I want it to be the biggest in the world. Divine Nero, Menecrates is here. I gave orders that no one was to disturb me. I'm too busy. Send him away. There's also the Consul Marcus Valerius. <laughs> First, it'll be necessary to clear away the slums. Down there where the dirty Christians hide, I'll sweep it all away. Yes, I'll level that entire quarter of the city. And in its place, you, Zeno, will build my new imperial palace. Nero's golden house. It must be sumptuous beyond imagination. An edifice that will bear constant testimony to the greatness of Nero. All this is for you, Papea, so that your beauty is adequately set off. Are you content? May I suggest something to Zeno? Wouldn't you like it if the new palace were arranged in the same way as the one in Athens? Of course. You're right. It's always worthwhile, isn't it, Petronius, to follow the example of the immortal Greeks? With their unsurpassed refinement and elegance, to a degree that even I could not match. Ah, Greece with its natural gift for divine statues and supreme works of art. <laughs> I shall journey to Athens, and there I shall sing my verses and declaim my tragedies, and upon my return to Rome, I shall be greeted in triumph. With all the rich gifts that I receive as prizes. Yes, no emperor will ever have won such honor and glory as will Nero for his songs and his verses. I assume you're Marcus Valerius. Commander of the 10th Legion. I ordered you to fall upon the Christians by surprise and to take every one of them prisoner. Menecrates, however, dares to say that you made it possible for these Christians to escape. How absurd. No one could make me believe that a consul would disobey Nero. It will happen whenever you try to reduce one of your commanders to the level of a vulgar assassin. What vulgar assassin? I mean Menecrates. That's a rash statement. He treacherously murdered one of my men, Labienus. The best centurion Rome ever had. He raised his sword against us, who for many years have been fighting to bring glory to your name. You were doing your duty, and only your duty. The point in question is, whether you did or did not contravene my orders and permit the Christians to escape from the catacombs. I did. You too. You too. You're one of those Christians. Tigellinus, are my legions a breeding place for these worms? No, you're wrong, Nero. No matter what you think, I'm not a Christian but I've been sickened by the cruelty and injustice with which you treat them. The Empire has no reason to be afraid of the Christians, provided you're willing to treat them all as equals. Are you by any chance trying to teach me, your Emperor, how to treat his subjects? Don't trust him, Nero. He's a Christian. I saw with my own eyes how he fought for them. Yes, you're right, Menecrates. Absolutely right. Now I realize it. But the real blame falls on all of you for not having exterminated the Christians right down to the last man. And now they're making converts even among my own soldiers. 
There's only one God on this earth. One single God that all men must adore. All. And that God is Nero. Nero is venerated by all of Rome. Except for the 10th Legion, it would seem. So wouldn't it be a good idea to insist that they prove their loyalty, O divine Nero? Yes. A good idea. That's a wonderful suggestion, Menecrates. I'm willing to offer you one more chance to regain my favor. On one condition. That you absolutely promise to annihilate every Christian that you can find in Rome. What do you say? I surrender my sword and my rank as consul. Menecrates. The 10th Legion is to be stricken from the list, disbanded, and all the traitors executed. As for you, Marcus Valerius, you will share the same fate as the Christians. Torn apart by lions. No! Crucified! Burned alive! Now get out! <laughs> yeah. You tell us, Popeia, who is your god, the true god of the Romans? Who else could it possibly be but you, divine Nero? Anger always inspires me. My genius calls, I hear, words. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me! Oh, truly powerful are the gods who human fates foretell. With our altars they rejoice in heaven and in hell, while yet on earth they dwell. He was sent to the Mamertine prison. The Mamertine prison? No one leaves there except to die in the circus. I'm going to try to collect a group of his men. The Legion was dissolved, but many of them are still loyal. But unfortunately, I've lost Fulvius. He was taken along with Marcus. You have a brave and generous heart, Claudius. And you're very dear to all of us. But I can't expect you and your companions to take such great risks even to save my son. I will go and appeal to Nero. If he sees the tears of a mother, he might be moved. I'm Julia, the daughter of Publius Rufus. My poor little Julia, I hope you'll consider this house as your own. Her father was killed last night by the Praetorians. That tyrant is exterminating us one by one after having destroyed our spirits and our hearts and even worse, our dignity. Rome has become an empire of slaves. There hardly seems any reason for living anymore, now that he's robbed us even of our liberty. Show more spirit. Keep your guard up. I'm 
many times do I have to tell you? Go on, fight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a sword, not a club. All right, one more. That's wrong here. I suppose you've brought me the usual assortment of weaklings. Look at them. How do you expect me to put on a show with the kind of material you're sending me? Why, my gladiators could annihilate them barehanded. It's up to you to make men of them. Anyway, this time I've brought you something special. Consul, you learn you can't disobey your emperor without paying for it. Come on. All right. Let's see. We'll begin with you. I'm not a fighting man. You will be. You will be. I won't. I'm a Christian. Take it. No one has ever stood up to Daco before. <laughs> I want to see how this turns out. Thank <laughs> you. 
must not underestimate the threat which the Christians pose to the empire. They preach the doctrine of forgiveness, even where Rome must act with great severity to maintain law and order. They preach equality and brotherhood, two principles which are bound to corrupt our national strength and weaken our dominion over other peoples. They preach the existence of only one God, and they mean their God, though we already worship the ancient gods, the divine Nero. They preach against the use of arms. Only through our dedication to the war god Mars have we been able to build this great empire and employ our youth. Who can deny it? And yet this insidious Christian doctrine has permeated the legions and corrupted the men. Even the commanders are tainted. This points to the inevitable end of our civilization. The traitors among us will refuse to admit that. This subversion is intended to destroy the whole basis of our society. And if we allow this subversion to continue, it will then be useless to attempt to restore those laws which once made Rome great and powerful in the past. And like the Romans of the past, we must put aside weak sentiment and deal ruthlessly and finally with this sect of religious fanatics. I approve without reservation the proposal of the divine Nero. And I also speak for the Senate when I order that the Christians are to be exterminated without pity. I appeal to you, Nero. Listen to me, I beg you. Tigellinus. Who is that woman? She's the mother of Marcus Valerius. Come forward. You had my son arrested and you decreed that he must die without any charges except the accusations of those who've always envied him and hoped to take his place. Is it possible that you, our august emperor, and all of you senators, fathers of the country, have you forgotten so easily what the consul Marcus Valerius has accomplished for Rome? And also for you. You are forgetting he disobeyed Nero's orders. I'm not convinced. It's easy to give orders that can never be followed. Orders that the conscience of a loyal and valorous soldier would never permit him to obey. But he knew that those orders came from me. The Emperor Nero. No. No matter as he might have committed, he doesn't deserve the punishment that you are inflicting. You must save him, Nero. Only a word from you can give back his life to him and to me. He has committed the horrible crime of being Christian. That has not yet been proved, Nero. His behavior proved it. You forget, Tigellinus, that right to your face, Marcus Valerius denied being a Christian. Seneca, you are a good philosopher, and I admire you. So you won't try to change my opinion of you if you're clever. Divine Nero. Marcus Valerius has escaped. You tried to make a fool of me. You came here with false humility, begging mercy for your son. And all the while you knew that he'd escaped from prison. He's escaped. The gods be thanked. Then you'll be our hostage. Arrest her! She's a noble woman. She doesn't deserve this. Must your men. If we don't recapture Marcus Valerius, we'll all lose our heads. Go on. Everyone's conspiring against me. Everyone. Take care, all of you. I warn you, take care. Claudius. Claudius. Marcus. Oh, Marcus, you're safe. I wanted to die when I heard about your arrest. Let's not talk about it. You're all I have left in the world. 
I can't live without you. And all my life, I never loved anyone else but you. Unfortunately, the senators can't agree even among themselves. So you finally arrived, Menecrates. It took all of my influence to protect you from the anger of Nero. It would appear we're in disgrace, aren't we? But you know it wasn't my fault. I don't care about your excuses. And I certainly would not have helped you if it weren't for the fact that I find your natural inclination for violence extremely useful. Under these conditions, there's only one way that you can possibly restore yourself to the good graces of Nero. Before the night is over, you better deliver Marcus Valerius. But where will you start looking, Menecrates? Rome is such a vast city. Yes. I admit that it's almost an impossible task. But instead of trying to track him down, maybe we can force him to come to us. Tell me how. I have a plan, Tigellinus. It can't possibly fail. Tonight, on the orders of Nero, the Christians are to be crucified and burned alive in front of the Temple of Apaches. So if we decree that his mother is to suffer the fate of crucifixion, and have the sentence published so the whole city knows that she'll be there, can you possibly believe that Marcus Valerius will stay in hiding while his mother burns on the cross? He'll be certain to come to her rescue. And I'll be waiting for him with my Praetorians. You approve? I must admit that it seems a foolproof idea. Yes, and well worthy of you. Wait a little while. How do you know that he'll come, Menecrates? He will, don't worry. I know him well enough to be absolutely sure. Now it came to pass in those days that Jesus, our Lord, went up the mountain to pray, together with his disciples and a great multitude of people. And Jesus saith, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who revile you. And if anyone strike thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would go to law with thee and take thy tunic, let him take thy cloak as well. And whoever forces thee to go for one mile, go with him too. To him who asks of thee give, and from him who would borrow of thee, do not turn away. I come to you with gladness in my heart, asking forgiveness for them, for they know not what they do. Amen. That's a bad omen, Menecrates. You'd better light the fires. All of them? Yes. <sighs> Except the cross of Livia. judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you shall be pardoned. Give, and you shall receive. They're burning the crosses in front of the temple. 
Marcus Valerius. They say they're going to crucify your mother. Claudius, gather all your men and we'll meet on the Flavian Way. Very well. Maybe it's a trick. Maybe, but we have no other choice. Farewell, Julia. Marcus, why are people so cruel to each other? Perhaps one day they won't be. Marcus Valerius, all of us are coming to help you. Listen to me, my brothers. Don't spill any more blood. You cannot fight evil with evil. We're forced to. If your God... If your God exists, he'll pardon me. When we can't wait any longer. Go ahead and set fire to Livia's cross. Unforgettable sight. Rome illuminated by the Christians. <laughs> Amuse yourselves. <laughs> Amuse yourselves, my honored guests, by witnessing the most gratifying spectacle of all. <laughs> the burning of the Christians. My verses. My friends, drink to me, for death soon will be mine. Hades offers no water and not even wine. Marvelous. God of the Christians, I have never prayed to you, but now I'm here with your phone. I beg you to show mercy. If you really exist, let me die quickly. Thank you, Lucius. I thank all of you.
spread this far. Why, I promise you, Crassus, that we're absolutely safe if we stay here. Wait! Why are you running away? I command you to stop! Cowards! Miserable idiots! Away. Everyone! They're leaving me all alone. Abandoned. You too, Seneca? Even you will abandon your emperor? The hour will surely come when you will regret this act of treason. It's you who have abandoned us, Nero. All of us. All your people in Rome. What has occurred tonight is a warning of your destiny. But it's a useless warning. You're too blind to see it. Popeia. Stay close to me. You alone, my adored, have remained faithful to your emperor. I would never leave you. Do you really think that it will be safe to stay? There's no need to worry. People of our rank are indestructible. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Gods and great geniuses are equally immortal. <laughs> the fire cannot burn us, Popea. 
But it will finish off those who've rebelled against their emperor, those Christians. And may they continue to burn in Hades. Uh, where did the fire start? In front of the Temple of the Arapaches. Arapaches. Where you ordered the mass crucifixion of all the condemned Christians. Oh, I see. I knew it was their fault. It's perfectly obvious to me. The Christians started the fire that's destroying Rome because they hate me like poison and want to damage my empire. <laughs> they must be mad. Madmen! What else could they be? Don't you agree, Papaya? Don't you? Yes. This is surely madness, Nero. Mm. It's the moment to create. I shall compose an ode. Something that shall always be remembered. <laughs> and do you know what it's going to say, Papaya? It's going to tell the whole world about how the Christians tried to destroy Rome. To exalt a false and lying god. Soar into the highest heavens, O oh immortal flames. Inspired by my genius, all Rome will worship the divine Nero at the splendid blazing altar that Nero has made of the capital. Believe me. Maniacs! Why are you running away? Come back! Come back, I tell you! I will rebuild Rome! More beautiful than ever before, I, Nero, promise you that Rome will rise again! We weren't able to save anything at all. Don't go in there. No. Father! Stop! Oh, please don't go in there. Father! city. No one will get my money. Stop! Who are you? What do you want? It shouldn't take any brains to figure that out. Put it down and get out of here. Go on and get moving. No cheap bandits are going to take my wealth from me. No, no, you mustn't. You mustn't kill me. I'm a senator, the father of the country.
Cincinnati. Fulvius, take care of the guards outside. We're going in. Thank you. 
Peter. Paul, where are you going? My Lord. This is not your road. In truth, I say unto you, that your place is there where your brothers suffer. And there, now and for always, wherever there is suffering, 